Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest on the very stormy weather that is going to be dominating the weather over the course of the next 36 hours or so. We've got very heavy rain moving in at the moment as the low pressure arrives and we are starting to see those winds pick up in the southwest and they'll strengthen through this afternoon into the evening. Could see a brief lull overnight if we see the peak winds as the low starts to clear into the North Sea through tomorrow afternoon, especially in southern areas uh, and especially in the southeast uh, and generally along coastal regions we could see wind speeds up to around 60 or 65 miles per hour in terms of gusts it has upgraded since yesterday where it did look more likely to be around 55 miles per hour not a significant upgrade but nonetheless still uh, an upgrade and we have seen more warnings issued for rainfall and the wind warning tomorrow has been expanded as well so we'll cover what's going on on the live radar at the moment so we'll have a look at the latest weather warnings and then we'll run through some of the short range charts looking at what they're thinking for showers um, and the rain and of course the very strong wind gusts over the next 24 hours or so and there is the risk of some thunderstorms in places as well so have a look at that and then we'll just finish by looking at the longer range as well to keep up to date with what's going on perhaps with the rest of July and unfortunately it is looking like a continuation of fairly cool and fairly unsettled conditions. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So to start on the live radar, as I said, we've got this big wall of rain moving in at the moment. And this is associated with the approaching low. Rain pretty much for all areas of England and Wales at the moment. And a huge area of extremely heavy rain through northern parts of the Republic of Ireland and the whole of Northern Ireland. These yellow and orange colours indicating precipitation rates of around 10 millimetres per hour or higher. So some of these regions could see multiple inches of rain come at the end of the day. Scotland spared from the heaviest rain at the moment. Some patchy uh, showers had, had seen some moderate uh, persistent rain in northern regions, but that's now cleared. But this rain will be heading to those regions through the rest of today. And we do actually have rain warnings issued there through tomorrow but the rest of this uh, rainfall will continue to spread northwards and eastwards and all eyes have to sit on the back edge uh, all eyes have to be on the back edge of this rainfall as we've got a warm slot a warm sector which is fueling this rain in this region uh, and it's a really quite warm sector it's around 15 degrees at 850 hpa so if we had seen dry conditions sunny conditions here instead of heavy rain uh, and cloud we could see temperatures as high as 30 degrees so it's quite warm humid air and there is some instability to, uh, associated with it and there is the risk on the back edge that we could see the rainfall pep up quite significantly as it spreads through central and eastern regions and could even see a few thunderstorms over the course of the next few hours around that 4 to 6 p.m point they could start to trigger already seeing some reds appearing here around cardiff and right along the south coast so it could just be the indication these storms are starting to trigger on this back edge as it does clear but elsewhere just widespread heavy rain and this will continue through the rest of the day before things do die down a little bit overnight before the big showers do, uh, do return into tomorrow with even stronger winds. Now if you look at the temperatures as of around 2pm it is pretty abysmal. As I said, we're not far from very hot air. We actually do have some very warm upper air temperatures spreading into the south at the moment and you can see across parts of France a couple hundred miles away not too far, we're seeing temperatures around the 30 degree mark. It's because the air mass that is fueling this low pressure system is getting coming from northern France and it's incredibly warm there. So we're not far from the hot conditions, so close, uh, but so far uh, at the same time. And you can see across parts of southern France getting up perhaps towards the 40 degree range uh, down here towards Bordeaux and uh, across the border with Andorra and Spain here, incredibly hot. But the UK abysmal temperatures widely in the mid teens maybe low teens through parts of the Republic of Ireland, northern ireland and wales and the midlands where the temperatures are really low because of the heavy rain and the best regions perhaps across parts of scotland far east and southeast england where we've just seen a bit of a dry slot go through temperatures may just about creep to the high teens or 20 degrees now we're seeing heavy rain at the moment but the winds haven't really properly got going yet these are sustained winds, uh, so these are not the gusts. These are sustained winds that we don't expect to be getting much higher than around 30 miles per hour or so. Uh, miles per hour or so. 
But towards the coast, of course, being local, it can be slightly higher. We're already seeing sustained winds down across parts of South Wales as high as maybe 40 miles per hour here and on the south coast again maybe locally 40 miles per hour but widely sort of 20 to 30 elsewhere expected to get as high as 20 to 30 through the rest of this afternoon and the winds to really peak tomorrow so the strongest winds are only really only just moving into the southwest just behind the weather front um, but it should catch up through this evening and we can see some quite wild conditions as set around that 4 to 6 p.m. point through central and eastern regions. And those winds will be even stronger tomorrow. As I said, 50, 55 or 60 mile per hour wind gusts quite widely, even in land regions. And again, there is always the risk that coastal places could get up to maybe 70 or 80 in a localised gust. Um, so, yeah, it could be really quite intense tomorrow. So if you are looking at the weather outside at the moment, you're saying... Well, we've got heavy rain, but the winds aren't really picking up too much. It's because those strongest winds most likely haven't properly arrived yet. Winds will pick up through the rest of this afternoon into the evening, die out a little bit overnight before re-strengthening, especially around lunchtime tomorrow, where, as I said, it could get very intense. Now, if you look at the latest weather warnings... You can see we've got extensive warnings issued now. We've got the wind warning issued for southwestern areas. It hasn't been updated since yesterday, but I'll run for it quite quickly from 7 a.m. today until 7 p.m. So even the Met Office warning does expire this evening. Uh, as it's expected, the wind will die down a little bit. Again, 35 to 50, uh, 45 miles per hour quite widely and as high as 50 miles per hour along coastal regions. And again, could cause disruption because of the unusual time of year for these such winds. High likelihood, lower end of the impact matrix. But we have seen rain warnings issued now. Got a widespread rain warning issued for the whole of Northern Ireland uh, that was issued earlier this morning from midday until 9pm. And it's for that, all that very heavy rain we're seeing. Again, wet and windy spell of weather here. 15 to 30 millimetres expected quite widely. And as I said, rainfall rates as high as 10 millimetres per hour in some spots. So, yeah. That is very likely. And then it could see as high as 30 to 60 millimetres in a few spots um, as this rain does continue for dying out later this evening. Again, a high likelihood at the lower end of the impact matrix. And then over some higher ground of Scotland, we're also seeing rain warnings issued. Again, for the rain arriving later this evening. So you're seeing your weather warning here, but this warning doesn't come into force for another six hours from the time of recording. So we've got rain warnings. Uh, again, these are the same, uh, got the same uh, warning here. But for two regions, spreading up through parts of the highlands of Scotland, up towards Aberdeenshire and then across parts of northern uh, Scotland near Inverness. Again, rain will become heavy and persistent across Scotland from this evening, uh, from the south this evening, clearing later in the night. Many areas will see 15 to 25 millimetres, and perhaps some spots seeing as high as 40 to 60 millimetres. Even lightning is, ish, uh, is uh, sp spoken about here, so is the risk of some thunderstorms as well. High likelihood, low end of the impact matrix. And then as we head into tomorrow, we've still got those rain warnings that we just looked at. And then we see the yellow wind warning has been expanded, not just to include southern and eastern regions, but also western regions. Again, the air which is likely to be affected by high winds has been extended to cover much of southwestern Britain. And I do, uh, even though it has only been upgraded in terms of its widespread nature, the winds have been upgraded from what I've seen on some of the latest models, even if that's not reflected here. The models are definitely ramping up those winds ever so slightly since yesterday and the extent. A blustery and showery day with some thunder, so thunderstorms are very possible within the heavy showers tomorrow. Typical low-pressure heavy showers, where it's going to be very hit and miss, but could be quite wild, as I said. Gust widely 40 miles per hour as high as maybe 50 mile, 55 miles per hour during the daytime. Again, from what I'm seeing the latest models, 55 miles per hour widely in land. And again, the models are high resolution, but not quite high resolution, just so sort of mile to mile sort of scale. And there is very possible that some higher ground over some hills in southern England and coastal regions could be even stronger. 60, maybe even 70 miles per hour cannot be ruled out from what I'm seeing on the latest models. So I'm surprised that the Met Office haven't upgraded this, uh, at least the, the phrasing here, to perhaps indicating that winds could be slightly higher. But nevertheless, very strong winds, yellow warning issued, could be our argument for an amber warning, maybe in a few spots. But I do think a uh, yellow warning is very, very warranted from what I'm seeing. As stated here, some minor damage and travel disruption is likely, and winds will moderate later in the evening. Again, they do pick out 
over hills and along coasts, particularly in eastern and southeastern England. These could be the regions that are hit the hardest from these stronger winds. Now, if we do have a look at the UK view, we'll start on the rainfall and then we'll have a look at those wind gusts. You can see the heavy rain spreading in at the moment. Very torrential rain through parts of Northern Ireland, parts of the proper Ireland and for much of England and Wales. And then through the rest of this afternoon and the evening, you see around that 4pm point, we see some really high rainfall rates towards that London area into East Anglia and South East England. The risk here of some thunderstorms initiating around that 3 or 4pm point. These reds appearing, even some darker reds indicating some really quite torrential rain. So you need to keep an eye on that. Again, we're not expecting anything too severe, but there is some cape around. Uh, we can have a look at that just quickly. Through the afternoon, there is some cape that's spreading in behind the weather front. And again, that could initiate some storms within the band of rain and get a lot of cape tomorrow as well. Nothing huge in terms of high amounts, but quite widespread. So that's why there is the risk of storms as well tomorrow. But as I said, if we do continue through the evening, rainfall eventually clears, but does linger quite significantly across parts of Scotland. It actually starts to spiral in for Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland once again through the early hours. As we head into tomorrow morning, around the 8 or 9 a.m. point, showers will start to trigger once again. Very heavy and potentially thundery in places with reds appearing within these showers as well. Very widespread as well. They will be hit and miss. Some regions may have a few hours without them, but I think you'll be extremely lucky tomorrow if you do avoid seeing any sharp showers at all. The best regions probably will be the far south and southeast, but showers will spread here at times, but perhaps just not quite as heavy and as wide spread but of course these regions will probably actually see the strongest winds through the afternoon rest of the afternoon could uh, rainfall could band together especially in the north and the west but eventually those showers should start to clear as the low clears out into the atlantic and into sunday another showery day but not quite as intense with the pressure slowly starting to rise into Monday, a few more showers around, but nothing too bad. And into Tuesday, you could see another low pressure approach. It does look quite deep initially, but it looks like it is weakening, at least its weather front's weakening as it does spread in, but could give another period of quite heavy rain in some northern regions. If you look at the wind gusts, you can see through this afternoon, the wind gusts are picking up, but they're nothing too severe at the moment. Out in the Irish Sea, down towards South Wales and South West England, we could have 40, 50 mile per hour gusts, maybe just touching 55, but that's nothing that what could be coming on later tomorrow. Winds will pick up widely further eastwards as well. We could see 30 or 40 miles per hour here, but again, nothing too severe yet. Overnight, those winds will be more exclusively out to sea around uh, by the front uh, as we are more in towards the centre of the low. Still could see 30, 40 miles per hour gusts, but those very strong gusts are likely to diminish. Around lunchtime tomorrow, we do start to see them rapidly increase. Look at that. Around the midday point tomorrow, look how strong those wind gusts are. Widely inland through the southern Ireland, Wales, all of southern England up towards the Midlands and even parts of northern England gusts of 40 to 50 miles per hour and even as high as 55 or 60 suggested here over some of those higher routes you can see down here perhaps towards south end 58 for some higher ground of central or southern England 53 56 58 along the coast and again these are relatively high resolution UKV run but if we did have a look at even higher a higher resolution than this you'd likely see bigger peaks here in those wind speeds as we progress through the rest of the afternoon looking very strong those winds will peak from around that midday to 3 p.m point uh, but widely mid 50s or high 50s in terms of miles per hour wind gusts in land remember through much of eastern england around 3 p.m tomorrow so it's going to be wild in places very strong winds and i am surprised that met office warning hasn't reflected that they've said winds could be up to 55 miles per hour over higher ground and coasts, but this UKV latest UKV run is showing a huge sector of eastern and southern England seeing those 55 or higher mile per hour wind gusts. As we spread through the evening, those wind gusts will slowly shift away, and around the sort of 7 pm point should drop below 50 and slowly diminish down to all sort of 20 30 miles per hour into Sunday morning. And there could be some stronger winds in the north through the early hours of Sunday, but again, we're looking at more 40 to 50 miles per hour here. So, definitely, the peak winds are for much of England and Wales through early Sunday afternoon picking up from the west around the late morning and really peaking through the early afternoon in the far southeast. 
And then as we head through the rest of the week, not too bad. If you look at the next uh, temperatures, really bad today. Could see a 21 in the far southeast, but widely mid-teens, low teens in some spots, high teens at best. Into tomorrow, could see temperatures rise slightly higher, maybe 23 in the far east. Again, avoiding those showers. But under the showers, it probably will be once again mid-teens at best for some. Into Sunday, temperatures will be better, widely more towards the high teens or low 20s. We see a bit more sunshine and less showers. And into Monday, a similar picture, more around the high teens, low 20s. Again, more sunshine and less cloud. And into Tuesday, actually quite a decent day for much of England, around 23 or 24, but still a lot cooler in the north and west as we see a bit more cloud and rain move in. Now, if we do go over to some other runs, have a look at the icon, see what I'm showing. Again, we can have a look at the max wind gusts in the south, uh, in the bottom right corner. Again, 50 miles per hour is 80 kilometers per hour. So anything around the 90 to 100 kilometers per hour is getting towards that 60 miles per hour range. So that's what we'll be looking uh, for to see if we do eclipse the 100 kilometers per hour mark. Now, you can see through this morning uh, and through the rest of this afternoon, we are showing perhaps as high as 115 km per hour wind gusts through parts of southern Republic of Ireland, South Wales and southwest England. Quite a bit stronger than the UKV was showing this morning. Very strong, uh, but it does tail off a little bit through this evening, but still gusts of around 100, mile, 100 km per hour in some spots. But those winds really start to pick up through lunchtime tomorrow, up towards the 100 km per hour once again. But it, the difference here is it's not just coastal regions and across parts of the Irish Sea. This is widespread through much of England and Wales and parts of the Republic of Ireland. And you can see how they do peak definitely over higher routes. You can see the higher ground here through eastern England, southeast England, over some of the hills in Kent, down towards the southwest, down towards the moors, um, and up towards parts of Wales as well. Very, very strong wind gusts here. Again, looking around that high sort of 80 or 90 kilometres per hour. So, 50 to 60 miles per hour, quite likely. So very similar to the UKV being seen here. Before those winds start to diminish through the evening, it could be very strong, uh, even higher perhaps just off the coast of East Anglia as we head through the evening. So it could be very disruptive through the day, but not only that, through the evening is the early hours of Sunday. Could we see very disruptive out in the North Sea with these wind gusts. Could be some very big swells and some large waves. If you also have a look at the uh, convective overview, just have a look at the precipitation. You can see very heavy through this evening. A good pep up in the southeast through this evening, uh, providing some thunderstorms. Into tomorrow, lots of heavy thundery showers breaking out, and eventually they do peter out through the late hours. But once again, another very unsettled and pretty wild next 36 hours incoming. If you do have a look at the R pair, see how that does compare. Again, through this morning, not quite as high as the uh, UKV or the Icon run was showing. More around the 90 kilometers per hour marks, so around the 55 miles per hour point through the rest of today. Uh, and as we head into tomorrow, it does diminish slightly overnight. Winds do stay quite strong offshore, but mostly on land they are uh, weaker. And then into tomorrow afternoon, those winds really pick up again to around that 90 kilometers per hour point through those southern, southeastern regions. Again, looking at 50 to 50 miles per hour, maybe as high as 60 in a few spots. Again, very strong from the Arpege. Not quite as strong as, as I would say as the Icon or the UKV. Definitely probably more in line with what the Met Office warning is showing around the 55 miles per hour peak. But regardless, still very strong. And the other two runs are going even stronger. So definitely 55 miles per hour looks pretty much guaranteed in many regions could be as high as 60, maybe 65, very locally. And if we do just have a look at those precipitation uh, as well, look at the convective overview. Again, very heavy rain through this evening. Could be a few thunderstorms later on. And then very heavy rain as we spread into tomorrow, especially in the north and west, but not exclusively. And there are moderate amounts of cape through the afternoon. You can see lots of the background here, cape uh, appearing. So again, could be some heavy thundery showers breaking out through tomorrow as well. Locally could cause some more issues. So it is looking pretty wild over the next 36 hours. Got plenty of warnings issued and they could be uh, amended as we head into tomorrow morning as well. So I'll keep you up to date with that. But the best thing you can do is make sure if you have got any garden furniture outside, make sure you do secure it. If you have got any plans tomorrow, outdoor plans, do keep an eye on that forecast rainfall 
it's still going to be an issue, but tomorrow won't be as much of an issue as it is today. But it's those winds that will be really quite severe tomorrow. So if you are doing something that ideally uh, it, it can be moved indoors or somewhere where uh, the wind won't be as much a factor, I'll definitely uh, take that into consideration as those winds are going to be very strong tomorrow, unseasonably strong, um, and it could cause damage because of the time of year and how we're not really prepared uh, or ready for anything strong this time of year. So as I said, do make sure you take care. If you just finish by looking at the longer range, just briefly update the GFS. Again, the stormy system is moving in at the moment, clearing out to the North Sea through Sunday and Monday. And then we go to a westerly flow, briefly dry for a time, but still plenty of showers around. And we stay in this westerly pattern with more low pressures moving in over the next couple of weeks. The difference here, though, is low pressure is not directly on top of us. So it could allow for some drier conditions in the southeast, higher pressure potentially building in. But... On the other hand, yes, there could be slightly dry conditions in the southeast, but upper air temperatures are likely to not be particularly great, showing maybe some brief warmer spells here or there, but mostly those upper air temperatures are pretty dire for the time of year, with plenty of blues mixed in around us. Could be a few yellows and orange patches at, at times, but mostly blues over the next week, and into the long term, again, a continuation of blues showing below average upper air temperatures. And we can see that well reflected on the ensembles generally average to below average upper air temperatures over the coming weeks. And with plenty of rainfall around, it's going to feel pretty cold and pretty unsettled, especially when we do have more persistent bands of rain. But hopefully, as we saw from the GFS, low pressure could be centred further away. And that'll mean the more persistent bands of rain are further away. Not doesn't mean that it's not going to encroach on Scotland and Northern Ireland that we do see, unfortunately, a lot of the time when we do have low pressure parked out in the Atlantic, but it will mean it could stop events like today where we are seeing widespread, extremely heavy rain and gusty winds. The two meters temperatures are going to fall uh, quite considerably, a uh, continuation around the low 20s or high teens, it could be slightly higher on the best days, but really nothing much above 25 degrees got any concrete possibility here and the winds are going to be strong as well really peaking through tomorrow you can see that uh, but it's going to remain fairly unsettled and fairly blustery especially further northwards and, uh, and westwards and just just finish looking at your uh, east of the f ensembles very unsettled and pretty chilly conditions are going to continue here could be briefly dry next week as I said low pressure moving away but it doesn't look like that's going to last too long with plenty of precipitation in the long term. So it's not looking great. Uh, continuation of very unsettled, cool conditions. Hopefully we do see something resembling more summery weather return. But this is uh, the last few Julys we've had, the last few summers in general we've had, where we've had plenty of hot and dry conditions. Uh, we're an exception. This is more typical uh, that we would see these sort of cooler, more unsettled spells. It's not that cold outside. It's just quite a bit cooler than June was and it is slightly below average for the time of year so hopefully we do see a bit of a change as we are now into sort of summer holiday season uh, so hopefully it's not a complete washout in the next sort of six weeks uh, or so but we will just have to see how it does play out for the meantime make sure you stay safe out in the next sort of 48 hours or so as we do get rid of this quite deep area of low pressure very strong gusty winds and some very heavy rain around for many so do make sure you do stay safe so anyway, thanks for watching, hope you have enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.